Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Maggie Bell. Today I want to talk about how I got into a top ranked PT school program. There are five main things I want to talk about and I think they are really important if you're trying to get into PT school in general, but especially a top ranked program. There's five things. So the first one is GPA, second is GRE scores, third is research hours, four is clinical hours, and then five is what makes you you and the things that you're involved in on campus. The additional things that make your application pop and makes you not just numbers anymore. I think this one's the most important and I know everyone says that, but I'm gonna tell you why. Things that you need to know about me are that I went to Towson University, which is about probably 15 minutes away from Baltimore, but I went there and I started in 2016 and I graduated in 2019. December 2019 and just this past December and my major was biology and I chose a specific track which was called functional biology of animals but it pretty much was human anatomy it's a human anatomy track and I chose this major was because or this track in this major was because it required you to take anatomy at the end and the I know PT school programs anatomy start at the beginning, so I thought it'd be a smoother transition and I wouldn't forget the anatomy. I'll let you know how that worked out, but basically at the end of my degree, I graduated Towson University with a 3.94 GPA, and I'm super proud to say that, but in absolutely no way, shape, or form is that required. Do not let that number scare you, that's just my number. Programs do not require a GPA that high. So just don't let that discourage you. Even if your GPA is on the lower side, there's a way to explain it. And there are plenty of people who have got into these programs who had a GPA lower than the average of these programs. Next, I wanna talk about GRE. So the GRE is a standardized exam that you take and it is five hours long. It is a very long test. And so you take it, you get numbers, and then a week later, they give you your full analyzed data, so your real scores. So I'm gonna tell you how I prepared for this exam and what you might need or look for or what your goals should probably be. The way I studied for my GRE exam was practice GRE exams. I don't personally do well with books. I just, my attention span is too short. I can't do it. I, just, I bought a book and it, I would just throw it aside or start and then be like, this is really boring and I couldn't keep my attention on this book. So I started just taking practice exams online and there's a bunch of free ones, do not pay for them. There's so many free ones and they're very helpful because you're able to recreate the environment that you take the test in. You're sitting there for the same amount of time and you see your scores and you see what you got wrong and you can go over things. And I think it's just more engaged than reading a book is, which is why it was so beneficial for me. I prepared and I had a goal. So my goal was is I wanted my verbal scores and my math scores to be above 300 if you added them together. So a lot of programs require that. So I know USC's program requires that. You're not even able to apply if your GRE scores are under that 300 threshold. So that was my goal. I wanted to be over that threshold so badly. And so when I took my GRE, I took it at 6 a.m. in Baltimore. I had to drive it to it took my test and I got my raw data and when I saw it my math was 155 and my verbal was 153 and I just I was so happy because I knew I got above a 300 if they were added together and so then I was like so happy and I ran out of the room and I left I told all my roommates and then I waited a week and so that's when my raw data came in and I got the same score so my scores weren't inflated or moved or anything like that I got a 155 in my quantitative reasoning and then I got a 153 in my verbal. And then writing was my lowest subject. It's gonna be. <laughs> but anyway, so my writing, I got a 3.5 and that is not very high. So none of my scores are extremely high. They were just what I needed and I was happy with them. I knew I could still be competitive with these scores. So with all of those things together, I had decided that I didn't need to take the GRE again or pay to take the GRE again because I thought I was still a competitive applicant with those scores. After my GRE, I started my PTCAS application. Next thing that was super important was my research hours. So I reached out to my anatomy professor and she is an amazing woman and I, she's so smart and I love her. And so I emailed her and I asked if she had any openings in her lab and I 
she responded back to me like within the same five minutes and said, yes, we have a lab assistant available and this position just, you have to help the people who are doing their projects. And that's what my job was. So I was just helping in this lab and I got research hours for it. It's actually how I met a lot of my friends. And so I'm so glad I did that. I would highly suggest, I know it's like really scary to look for research, but all I just, just take the shot in the dark and just, know your professor and see what they say the worst thing they can say is that they don't have any openings or that they know they'll say no you know and if i would i was so scared to email this professor about research because i would in my brain i was like if she wanted me to be in her lab she would have reached out to me but no you are in control of your own life and if you want something to happen you have to make it happen and that's what i kept telling myself so i reached out to her and i reached out to all my anatomy professors and she was the only one that said yes i'm so glad she did because she was my favorite professor at Towson. Then I did that for the next year and a half. And so I got approximately 100 to 150 research hours, which probably was a lot, but I really enjoyed that time. I'm really glad I did it. And it gave me an exposure to a different side of biology that I probably would have never gotten if I didn't join that lab. The next thing I want to talk about is clinical hours. It's also really important because it shows the, person, the school that you're applying to that you're confident in your decision because you've been experienced to it or you know things about PT because you've been exposed to it. I had no idea where to start. I well, I went on indeed.com and I searched PT assistant, I searched PT tech, I searched rehab tech. I was applying to all the jobs and I wasn't hearing back. I was super discouraged, but then finally I got a call. It was from ATI Physical Therapy in Essex and I got a position. So I interviewed, I got the job and I started teching which is the same as a pt tech that's just a different name for it i remember working there and that's how i got my outpatient hours because they were an outpatient clinic the thing that was very helpful from that clinic is that they were high volume i was busy i would always work with two to three other girls and we were always busy always running around but it exposed me to so many different types of physical therapy and it was so helpful and it looks good on your application because that's what your school's thinking like wow she's seen this many different types of physical therapy she must really want to do this highly suggest high volume clinic wide range of types of pt not a specific range if if it's possible it's not the end of the world if you can't i just think that was beneficial towards me and my application and then my acceptance something else that's also really important is inpatient hours so inpatient hours are different than outpatient hours outpatient hours are standalone clinics people come in they go to their appointment and then they leave their appointment. But inpatient hours are places that the patients spend the night, they stay overnight. So this is nursing homes, rehab centers for people who have just gotten out of surgery, hospitals. And so I did my inpatient hours at St. Joseph's Hospital. It was so convenient for me because it was a five minute drive from my home. And so I had reached out to the volunteer coordinator, got me in touch with a physical therapist, and this physical therapist had actually gone to UD. So it was actually super beneficial and a really good coincidence because she helped me a lot. And so I would go in every Friday because I didn't have classes on Fridays, and I would shadow her for six hours. And I did that for weeks. And I did that until I got 30 inpatient shadowing hours and I reported that on my PTCAS application and she verified it. So that's how I got my inpatient hours and I think it's really important to have both these hours because if you don't have the inpatient hours, it doesn't look as good because you haven't been exposed to a whole side of the physical therapy. So um, just try your best to try and get at least just a couple inpatient hours. Even if you do one day, it just looks better than the zero. But I know the guidelines are kind of different now due to COVID, so I'm sure schools are going to be more lenient if you can't get into a hospital right now. Something else that's extremely important is, you know, after all the numbers are done, the hours, the GPA, the GRE scores, you're still a person, you're still a well-rounded individual and you have hobbies and things that you like and things that you like to be involved in. And since I was so busy with school, I, I just didn't have time to do a lot of clubs. So what I did was I put a lot of my time towards one club and it was student or not a lot of my time really I put as much time as I possibly could towards one club and so my club was called Students Helping Honduras and it was through Towson University and this club is 
the most amazing thing ever. And all of the board members are so great and so nice. And it was a club that I was really proud to be a part of. But me and our club members, we went to Honduras during winter break. And what we do is we go there and we rebuild a school or we rebuild a building or whatever they need in order to help them gain their education. This was what I wrote my essays about. And the reason I wrote my essays about this is because I could talk about it. I knew that I could sit down and I could talk about it if anyone ever asked me about it because this experience really changed my life and it really changed my perspective on things and this is what I wrote my essays about. This is literally what I sat in my faculty member's office during my interview. We talked about my experience in Honduras for 30 minutes. Highly suggest if you are going to talk about a club, talk about a club that you're passionate about and that you love and that changed something about you or changed your views or changed your perspective on things because if you talk about something that you're not passionate about your your interviewer will see that tell that you just wrote that down to write it down if that makes sense and you don't have to be involved in a bajillion different clubs i was not i was involved in one club and that was only when i had time because i had tests almost every week and i had work when i didn't have test or when i didn't have school and then it was very hard for me to find time for this club, but I'm so glad I did it because I think this is the main reason I got into PT school was through the interview talking about my experience with this club. And I know everyone says like, make sure you're involved, but it doesn't have to be involved in everything. It just has to be something that's not school, something that you're passionate about. So that's actually all I have. Um, these are the things that really helped me strengthen my application and get into this program that I never thought I would ever be even considered to be a part of.